And there's my new build. So it's been seven years since I built my last music production computer. It was starting to show signs of age, and I was starting to get worried because the only thing I hadn't really replaced on it was the motherboard, and I was afraid it was aging out. So that said, this is going to be one of the few videos that I'm actually doing still pics because I don't have a video camera, and my phone just probably wouldn't do it justice, as you'll probably witness in the pictures. So I'm a guy who always builds things a generation behind because I'm waiting for the technology to maybe work out its kinks. I was dying to get my hands on, what is it, a 7820X or something like that. They're just over $600. It didn't make sense to me price-wise in terms of performance gained with those chips. So I decided to just stick with a generation behind. I chose the Intel i7 7700K. I'm actually running that chip on turbo. Its normal frequency is 4.2 gigahertz. I'm running it at turbo, which is 4.45 or 4.5 gigahertz. And it's a huge improvement over my previous computer, which had an i7-930. Motherboard. I chose the Asus Maximus Hero 9. That's an LGA-1151 Z270. That has a lot of ROG stuff on it. I don't use that. It did have the connectivity I wanted, and it also had a fair amount of good reviews as opposed to a lot of the other boards in that kind of class. They just weren't getting the best reviews. I picked the one that I thought had the best reviews and also had the connectivity I wanted. RAM, the G-Skill Trident Z series. I have 32 gigabytes. I might up that to 64 I've never used G-Skill RAM before. We'll see how it goes. My case, I went with a Be Quiet Dark Base Pro 900. For me, it seemed like the case had a lot of airflow and the drive cages just seemed logical. Cable management, that case actually did arrive damaged though. I was crushed when it arrived damaged. And believe it or not, I just made do. The frame that the case actually sits on had two plastic pieces actually break off during shipping. I won't go into it, but I remedied it with a toothbrush, the end of a toothbrush. Just totally bizarre. You pay for a really expensive case and then mod it with a toothbrush. Okay, my CPU cooler, the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 3. You probably see a theme here. I was just a fan of that brand, so I was trying it out. I actually do have a Noctua DH14, I think that's what it's called, which would fit on this computer. I decided to try this one, and we'll see how it turns out. Thus far, the temps I'm getting are great. There actually hasn't been a single temperature that made me worry. And the CPU cooler itself, I was wondering if my RAM was going to fit in there. I contacted the manufacturer with the specifications that were there. I thought the RAM might not fit, and I gave them the clearances, and they said, yes, you'll be okay. I'm going to tell you that that is the most tight fit I've ever seen. I mean, the CPU cooler edge is literally a credit card thickness away from the RAM. It's really close. The power supply. Be quiet. Dark Power Pro 11. The video card. Asus GeForce GTX 750 Ti Strix Edition. I picked that video card because it had the connectivity I wanted. This isn't just a random choice. This is on the QVL, which if you don't know, that's a qualified vendors list in the motherboard manual or maybe not the manual. It's not in the manual. It's in whatever they release. With this motherboard, I actually didn't need a video card. Since I was doing a lot of screen capture type work, I figured I would be best suited to have a dedicated graphics card. Extra fans. Be quiet. Silent wings. I think I only put one of these in. One extra. Maybe two? I can't remember. The case already has five or six fans, so it's well cooled. Temperatures are good. Tools. I'm not sure where I got this tool set, but this is definitely something you want to look into if you're thinking about building. Make sure you have Arctic Silver, a magnetic screwdriver, an extra set of batteries. You're only going to need one. These are CMOS batteries. CR2032. I think that's the number. The keyboard and mouse. I'd read in advance that this particular motherboard might have trouble with Logitech keyboards and mice. I'm a huge fan of Logitech, but I didn't want to run into problems with freezes and all that. So I actually ended up with a gamer keyboard and mouse. It's kind of gaudy, but I kind of like it at this point. It actually has a really good feel to it. At first, it made me sick to my stomach to look at the lights. Don't forget to get yourself an anti-static mat. One thing I didn't picture here was an M.2. This is the first time I've tried an M.2 drive. 256 gigabyte Samsung. 
as my main C drive, and we're gonna see how that goes. So far, I'm a week into using it for production and everything is running smoothly. So that's the new build. So far, it's working beautifully with FL Studio. I haven't had any problems. It's loading up my heaviest projects from the previous computer, projects that were maxing out the FL Studio buffer at times, you know, 70, 80, 90%. Those projects are down to like 5%, 4%, maybe 7% or 8%. And of course, that's just in the FL Studio meter. Windows meter is literally like 3 or 4%. This computer is crushing my old projects, which is beautiful. There's my new build. Hope you have a wonderful day.